What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Maria and if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do so. I post there every single day and I'm trying to stay consistent with my YouTube channel as well. My Instagram handle is Maria Carvajal Fitness if you want to follow along for the journey on that platform. So today we are actually doing a Q&A regarding my boobs. Okay, so I posted a YouTube video a while back at last year, uh, after four weeks after I got my boob job. So I got a breast augmentation. I've been wanting that for so long and I decided to follow through and just do it. And I filmed a little bit of my post-surgery experience and what led me to make the decision for myself at the end of the day and all that stuff so now almost a year later here we are <laughs> they're fully dropped and this is the final look i thought i would like to actually wear something kind of revealing so you guys can see but anyway that is it and i did a poll not a poll a question box on my instagram because i know so many girls always i get these questions every single time what size did you get? What kind of implant you got? Because at the end of the day, like, I don't want to like sound conceited or anything, but my boobs look freaking amazing. And I do get a lot of compliments on it from girls. If you get a compliment from a guy, I'm not going to take it as a compliment. I'm going to actually take that as you being, you're being creepy. So anyway, that's besides the point, but girls, you can compliment all you want. Guys, stay away especially now. So, <laughs> um, I did a Q&A and many of you have obviously questions on how things have been a year later uh, in March. So it's going to be a year in March, but so far I've done preps, I've been so lean and I've obviously had my boobs uh, during my preps. So I actually have an off-season look and a competition prep look so I can speak on both ends and how everything has been how everything has felt and Just the way everything healed and yeah, I guess let's get right into the questions. So we're gonna start um, Someone said the size is perfect for you and they look very proportionate. Yes my size was 415 cc's and I actually uh, think that was the perfect size for me it's considering I'm 5'2 and I fluctuate during the off season between a 120 to 130 pounds and um, obviously I have a little frame and kind of like big arms and everything like that like I, I'm not very hourglass shaped I'm more so like more I don't have a lot of hips that's what I'm trying to say so I think this just shaped up shaped up my body a lot more in terms of how I look um in terms of like chest to waist to hip ratio so I really love the shape I really love how everything looks and how proportionate it makes me look and how it makes me feel because at the end of the day I just wanted to feel more feminine more confident in my skin and that's exactly what happened um so how did you integrate lifting back into your life best tip for efficient healing so it took me four weeks to actually get back to the gym. Um, I didn't even do like any like cardio or anything uh, until I hit the four week mark because I was considering like doing it at two weeks because I know some girls healed a lot faster and they went for it. But guys, I spent so much money on this and it was an investment and I wasn't trying to rush the process just because I couldn't wait an extra two weeks and I could have made the healing process a lot harder and maybe I would have messed up the look of them and I, I would have had to spend more money on a revision and everything like that so I do suggest and encourage you to take your time uh, and just let your body heal let things do, follow what your doctor says do not go against that because they're the professionals if you want to do your own thing do it at your own risk but know that you spend that much money and you went through a surgery you don't want to go through that again so take your freaking time the gym is always going to be there just stay on point with your nutrition if you're really that concerned about how you're going to do and your weight and all that stuff and just know like your body's recovering so you're going to be inflamed like I think I gained, uh, post-surgery I gained 10 pounds just from inflammation alone from the surgery, the anesthesia, the painkillers, everything. So 
give your body a break don't be so hard on yourself and try to rush things and then end up messing things up and you're gonna regret it um so yeah four weeks i actually started doing body weight band lower body workouts and i didn't do any upper body until the six week mark because even like at the two week mark post-surgery you cannot lift your arms beyond this point so you have to t-rex everything just because obviously the pocket is forming and you don't want to mess that up by going beyond here and push the implant up or just like it will shift to the side and just just like i said follow what your doctor says so four weeks for lower body body weight and band workouts gradually increasing weight and obviously listening to listening to your body and very very low impact cardio so it was like walk uh, and then uh, six weeks for upper body again this was like transitioning from band upper work upper body workouts to slowly adding weight according to how things felt and best tip for efficient healing take your time take collagen I was taking a lot of collagen and glutamine uh, as well as keeping up with my protein intake just because you are like healing the muscle especially if you go under the muscle you want to make sure that the protein synthesis is there and you're just replenishing with stuff to actually aid the muscle recovery and healing process um that would be my tips or what helped me personally uh how do you know it's the right time this has to come from within you Okay, the right time as in like where you are financially, where you are in life, if there's someone that can take care of you at least for a whole week, like 24 seven, you won't be able to do a lot. So the right time has a lot of factors that come into play and you have to consider that. And if you're specifically talking if, is this the right time for me to get a boob job? It really is up to you. Like. That decision has to be, be made by you and you only and not other people or your partner or anything. If they don't support it, consider those things too. I'm not saying neglect it, but I did it for myself. I didn't care who was against it and my partner at the time wasn't 100% on board with it. But I wanted this for myself and I went for it because I did it for me and that is it. Uh, if you could do it again, bigger or smaller or the same. So actually, when I went for the consultation to pick my size, I was debating uh, going like below 400s and I am so glad I didn't. So I actually went with something that I thought was big for me and I'm so glad I did because once they're under the muscle, if you're really tight around this area, things are going to get a little bit squeezed, you know? So. I consider that, I also consider that I fluctuating weight a lot, especially because I prep, I go from being lean, really lean to now, obviously off season body, I have more body fat percentage, but I did consider that even during the off season, my breast tissue wasn't like overly whelming, so, overly whelming, overwhelming, <laughs> so, um, I did consider those things, so I knew that I wasn't going to gain a lot of body fat around here, even during the off season, so I went with something that... I thought was considered big um, before the surgery and would I want to if I want to do it again would I go bigger maybe I would go up to 450 but again when I lean out I feel like my boobs are out there uh, because everything else gets smaller so I don't want to be all boobs you know if you look at me I don't want to be the first thing you see it's my boobs like I didn't want that to stand out so much I wanted to still keep it a little bit out there but not so much out there if you know what I mean so the answer to this question is I'm happy with the size that I went with would I go bigger if I did it again I would go to 450 for sure um, is it weird getting used to them the weight bouncing etc at first it was a little bit uh, considering also I was freaking out because I didn't I didn't want to like mess anything up so the bouncing sometimes mess me like mess with my head and I will avoid anything high impact you have to avoid anything 
like high impact especially if the first six months just because you don't want to rupture the pocket again the pocket is key and it, that's gonna de uh, decide how well they're gonna drop and the shape they're gonna have without any support like a sports bra so um, yes at first it was a little hard getting used to them also because people around me were used to seeing me with no breast I guess I had breast okay what I'm saying what am I saying but obviously the size so it did change my look it did draw people's attention to my boobs especially because all of my clothes were now fitting a lot more revealing or I look a, a little bit more sexual I should say so yeah it did feel a little bit awkward at first I didn't know whether to like like walk around in a sports bra or just put a shirt on and it covered my neck and then I was like you know what I I freaking got this because I wanted boobs so I'm gonna freaking flaunt them if I want to so it did take me a couple of weeks to get comfortable with that and being okay with people looking or just feeling a certain they weren't even looking I feel like I was just hyper aware and I thought something that wasn't really there because I was self-conscious about it you know what I mean so yeah, that was, I think, the, the part where I was like, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, what was your bra size before? So I was a 32A and I'm a 32 double D now. Did you ever notice or feel any rippling when you got lean? So this was one of the things I was really scared about and thankfully I didn't get any rippling like at all. My boobs remained really round, perky and just like, no rippling out around it not even when I would like go like this bend over and they will hang I would say so I don't know um I think it's because like there was a lot of tightness around my my breast area that everything is just like so well held together I don't know um I don't know maybe it has to do with your skin how thick it is um and how elastic it is because i have really thick skin and i don't know if that has something to do with it and um yeah i didn't experience any rippling um but i know some friends who do experience rippling and we all heal different i like like i said in my previous vlog your your anatomy will determine we determine how close or how separate your boobs are gonna look and thankfully mine just even without a bra they remained kind of close together so yeah it all depends guys it's different for everyone so do not focus on just one person and if you have questions and like how things are gonna look if you're concerned concerned about something you have to make this um address this with your surgeon because at the end of the day they're the ones who deal with like all these body types all these like um shapes and like just a shape of your chest they know everything so they know what what's gonna look good on you and what's not so keep that in mind don't be so close-minded when it comes to that be open to what your surgeon has to say um have you noticed an any changes in placements of the implants down or to the side? No. So obviously they dropped. So at first they were like so high up to my collarbones. And then over time you have to massage after uh, the first week. Your, obviously your stitches have to heal. Especially if you got um, under like your breastfold incision. So after one week or two weeks. Are you, I don't remember. You have to start massaging to push the implant down. And I just gotta say, like, my boobs stay very put because they were perky as they were when with no implants. So when my implant dropped, it just dropped nicely. Um, but that was about it. I didn't notice over time any any displacement to the side or any separation or anything like that. Even when I was lean. So I guess I'm lucky. I guess I'm, I'm like it depends. Um. <sighs> scars are they noticeable so my scars are very small like this big because my doctor does use use i don't know why i'm like talking so fast um 
my doctor does use the funnel technique so he actually puts like a funnel and like he squeezes he puts a funnel inside your the incision and then squeezes the implant in so it goes right in so there's no like manipulation of him like shoving the implant with his hand <laughs> I don't know. so I think that helps keep the incision really really small and um, and yeah in terms of how noticeable they are they are very like almost not noticeable anymore at first obviously the first year you're gonna have a little more of like pigmentation around the scar it's normal when your skin is obviously healing but over time it will fade away so the pigmentation is actually less and you can barely see my scars and they're also really small so under the 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 breast as well so now that they've dropped it covers the scars so unless I go like this and like stretch the skin you can tell but honestly it's honestly been like a year so just gotta give it time uh, any recommendations and now that it's been a year to someone who's getting it done for the first time like I said do it for you do your research on good doctors don't go to just anybody this is your body this is something that's gonna stay in your body for years so don't cheap out I did the uh, cohesive gel high profile for 15 cc's and this is just something because of the feel I wanted something that's high profile so from the side it will look more round not so much of a teardrop and I wanted just like perky boots so that's why I chose uh, high profile and in terms of cohesive gel, it's obviously silicone and um, they just feel very like natural when you squeeze them. Uh, they obviously feel firm, but natural. You know what I mean? Toned. <laughs> um, but yeah, do it for you. Do your research, don't cheap out and take your time. Honestly, if, if it's a matter of finances, take your time to do it. Wait another couple of years and then go ahead with it. Um, what kind of bras uh, can you wear to sleep to sleep and currently I don't wear a bra so I'm worried when I get a BA so <clears throat> this was a thing like actually I don't know some people call me crazy but I asked the nurse so the second day I was I was home from surgery the bra was actually like um like making my stitches hurt so bad so I called the nurse I'm like is this normal to have the bra dig into my 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 stitches that had just fresh obviously second day and she's like it's okay just remove the the bra and I was like are you sure so I removed the bra and I was sleeping braless for the first week of my surgery which is crazy because now I see these girls going to the same doctor they wear the thing and they sometimes add bands around here it's different for everyone depends how tight your your skin is but i don't know it's different for everyone i didn't wear a bra the first week and everyone's like whoa how did you now get a supportive bra the first week when you're supposed to i don't know i sleep without a bra still now however i did notice lately that because things are a little bit less like i don't know what's like how to explain it like they fully dropped I feel like now they're more they drop to the sides so I actually have to wear something to bed just to support them and honestly I actually don't want them to shift anyway so I have started to wear um, just like very like comfortable um, like I think it's like a rib fabric material they're from like Aritzia, they're TNA and they're very comfortable to sleep. They don't squeeze or they don't have any like um, wires or anything. So I do recommend wearing those or like even like uh, this is Lululemon. You can wear them depending on how tight they are around the back. But yeah, do suggest, do not do what I did. I got lucky, things didn't shift or anything like that. But do wear bras. To support your boobs because you don't want them to drop or like displace or go to the sides or go up and down i don't know so i guess i got lucky don't follow what i did and if you are used to sleeping with nothing on now that you don't have a ba do consider that you will have to wear something just to preserve the shape of your boobs 
Uh, do they hurt when your boyfriend squeezes them or during sex? Okay, so this question was funny. I don't know why but like I that was one of the things I was thinking about and no um, They don't hurt like I said, they just feel firm and I don't know for the guy how it feels but they feel good according to my boyfriend so um yeah they don't hurt during sex unless you're like doing something wild and i don't know but they don't uh even when i first got them done they it felt a little bit uncomfortable at first especially the first the first um two months when you could actually like do things because obviously sex was not a thing the first six weeks and um well at least for me i didn't want to mess anything up so yeah I don't know the first the first couple months they do feel new for you and your partner and I guess that gets a little bit of getting used to and also like there's not a lot of touching the first couple months because you're still a little bit sensitive especially because your nerves are regenerating and you don't want to like mess with like the scar area because even that like is still very fresh so yeah I don't know but now it's like really good so we're good just have fun with them <laughs> um are your nipples sensitive or you lost it so i actually uh okay so after the surgery you either get really hypersensitive or you feel nothing at all mine were hypersensitive so my nipples were super super sensitive to the point where the fabric of my shirt rubbing on them was crazy painful like i say even the air touching them was painful so this lasted about two weeks and then things start getting back to normal like i said nerves are regenerating so you will feel either like nothing or you will feel a lot of things and now they're just back to their normal sensitive i didn't lose any sensitivity at all so you still get the the pleasure out of it of your nipples i don't even know um but you know what i mean so um yeah, I didn't lose sensitivity, but I know you can. I know someone who had sensitivity on one and then the other one was completely gone. So it all depends on the healing and how your doctor goes about things around those areas. Um, can you do a payment plan if you don't have that kind of money up front? So there are a lot of insurance companies that do loan uh, your money for this procedure. However, I do suggest having at least of a little bit of a down payment just because the interest rates are really, really high. So you want to make sure that you have at least like a portion of it to pay up front and then do payments as you can handle them. Again, everyone's finances are different and the surgery does cost about 12, 12 grand and it like it depends on what. Uh, if you go for silicone or saline, they're different like prices. Saline's a lot cheaper, but I know um, it, it all depends. Like we're all like we're all in different spots financially. So if you can handle a monthly payment for several years, then do so. It is an option, and um, it's all a matter of what you want to do in that case. And let's see, we're gonna do a couple more. How do your pre-op clothes fit? Did you have to size up in a lot of your tops, dresses? So, not really. I actually, my clothes started fitting better. Just because I had no breast tissue at all, so there was always room in my clothes. There were obviously certain clothes that no longer fit, just because, like, around this area, it would just be too tight. But overall, like, I didn't have to size up on anything. Uh... Well, I used to do extra small, so I no longer did extra small tops. I went up to just smalls, but most of my tops were small and um, everything just fit nicer. And I just felt more confident in my clothes just because I felt like I could fit in them better. Um, but yeah, I didn't have to like change my entire wardrobe. Not at all. Like this sports bra is like a size 4 from Lululemon. I've had it for years and I still wear it. I know it's a little boobylicious, but I like the look, so... It also depends on what you're into. If you're not into like that overly boobylicious, then you might have to size up to medium, but I was comfortable with it, so we just went for it, you know? Um, are there any exercises that you can't do anymore for me, chest presses or flies? Yes, 
no chest workouts this is something that your your um doctor actually tells you they're like you know you're aware that no chest workouts will be um will be done after the surgery just because you don't want to fully contract the chest muscles this will actually cause them to shift and i can do pull-ups pull-ups actually hurt especially because the stretch here and then pulling yourself up it does use your chest muscles especially this area and i just didn't feel comfortable they don't feel comfortable at all not even assisted so i okay so my camera overheated so i don't even know what i was saying but i was talking about exercises i can no longer do so yeah pull-ups um push-ups and i can do chest flies any chest movements like i i just avoid and also the incline shoulder press sometimes i try not to do too much incline because it does do a lot of this and also bench dips at first now they feel okay but at first guys the first i'm gonna say eight months i couldn't do bench dips for triceps because obviously just stretch this area and like it was just like weirdly like pushing my my implants in a weird way so i was like okay no let's avoid those so I'm gonna say avoid pull-ups, push-ups, any chest workouts, chest flies, and be careful with bench dips. That is like basically what I was careful about and I no longer do. So it did limit a few things, but it's not like as a bikini competitor I need to work out chest. So it was kind of like it worked it, it worked out, you know? Um any discomfort or pain after surgery so obviously yes uh it is like they're cutting into you so they're adding something they're they're just messing with things there nerves and everything like i said before so yes i did experience things the first week you actually experience singers singers are like the shooting random pains that come and go and they can last for like seconds or like minutes uh and they come like several times a day and that is just your nerves regenerating so they're actually going to cause shooting pains and it was kind of uncomfortable i didn't take any painkillers for it because it's honestly like a natural thing to happen but yes the first two weeks were very uncomfortable anesthesia made me really sick um doctor did say that only 10 percent of patients do experience this kind of effect after being put under and i was one of those 10 percent i remember as soon as i woke up and I got up from that bed, I needed a bag because I was just nauseous as hell. And I was basically puking on my way home, like all throughout. And uh, even after I couldn't put anything down. And then I was like that for like about three days, just because obviously anesthesia takes it about 48 to 72 hours to get out of your system, if I'm not mistaken. So I did experience that and it wasn't the best. So yeah. I don't think I want to be put under again because that was not fun especially because you have to be fasted for about 24 hours and you can't drink water for eight hours before the surgery so I had nothing to puke guys it was painful puking so I do not want to go through that again and again it happens to only 10% of patients don't think that you're gonna get sick from it I don't want to scare you but it is a thing and um, you may be one of 10%, I was, and honestly, it wasn't fun at all, but we made it through. It was worth every single shooting pain, it was worth every single struggle to recover, and all of the pounds I gained during the six weeks I couldn't really work out, because I just snapped back, like, as soon as I was back, and then I started prep, like, short after, so it was fine. It was completely fine. Like, the surgery is... 30 minutes you guys go in there and actually what takes the longest is you waking up from anesthesia but it's pretty pretty good pretty straightforward to be honest especially if you go to a doctor that makes you feel comfortable and it's very knowledgeable 100 percent. and i think that's all i'm gonna do are they fun to play with <laughs> i don't know i don't play with them your partner may play with them it depends what they're into but yeah, they're nice to look at, nice to like play with, I guess. So yeah, worth every penny, worth every struggle, like I said. And um, after one year, I'm happy with the shape. I'm happy with everything. So no complications, 
like I said, just be patient about your healing process. That is the most important part because if you do rush that, you will kind of provoke a cascade of negative things that may come in the future. So you don't want to do that. Take your time the six, the uh, first six weeks and you guys should be okay for the rest of the year, especially the first six months post-surgery, which is where they completely drop and that will be the final look. Nonetheless, guys, if you have any questions that I didn't cover during this video, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'll be glad to address them all. And yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you in any way or it suits your soul or it just reassures you about your decision. I'm not saying go get your boobs done now because they will validate who you are. I'm not saying that, but I am saying do it for you. If you want to feel confident in your skin, if you want to do that for you, do it, girl. I feel like life is too short to care about what people think nowadays. So that's the, that's what I've learned in this past couple of years. So just go with what makes you happy. That's it. But don't forget to subscribe, like, all that stuff. You know what it is. Everyone freaking says it. And I am off to work out right now. But see you guys in the next one. I love you all. Thanks for watching. And that's all. See ya. Kisses. Besos. Besos a todos.